Hello friends, welcome to the world of learning and growing. I am Dr. Purnima and today we are going to talk about the most asked topic on our comment section. So today we are going to talk about how to prepare for NEET UG. Yes, many of you have been uh, writing to me asking ma'am please tell us how to prepare for NEET uh, UG because it is upcoming and it is very soon. So after the last video that I have pinned below, uh, I have told about how to study for MD. Now I am going a little backwards in time when I was in my 11th and 12th and I had these subjects of physics, chemistry and mathematics and biology. So I think that is a different ball game altogether but that is the foundation of your medical career. So if I want to tell you about my experience, so whatever I have uh, learned in my 11th and 12th, I am still studying after my MD. So all the chapters like genetics that you have, Mendelian inheritance, uh, <coughs> transcription, translation, immunity, all of it is used for my cancer study, for my MD, where we are studying about chemotherapy, where we are studying about immunotherapy, about radiation therapy. So the basic concepts are built in your 11th and 12th. Then when we come to the systems such as a kidney, or respiratory system or cardiovascular system so those are the systems that you are going to study in your first year second year third year mbbs and your entire medicine and surgery is based on the same physiology and anatomy so the base starts from 11th and 12th and therefore i want uh, you guys to know it very 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 well not just for the exam but i am sure you want to do mbbs so when you look up to achieving some great results in your UG and PG career, I think this is the foundation. So today I'm going to give you a very simple technique of uh, how to study biology. So let's start now. So as I've been seeing uh, the pattern of NEET UG for the past few years, what I've understood and realized is they have a very typical set of pattern where from the NCRT, they just pick up any line from the chapter and they give you as an MCQ. That is so simple. So if you remember and learn this book by heart, then you might know all the questions. But is it possible? Is it humanly possible to actually learn and rectify everything? I guess no. So what is the hack here? The hack is multiple revisions. When you have multiple revisions, when you go through the topic again and again and again, every time you remember just one more point. Then again, in the next read, you remember another point. The third revision, you uh, remember some other important point. So this is how you are going to have to study. You cannot just sit one night prior and say that I'm going to complete the entire syllabus. No, that is not going to happen. And it is not easy to revise the entire book in one night also. So what to do in uh, the last and final phase of your preparation? So for that, you have to start a bit early. Now also you have time. Okay, so even if you start from today, you have time to prepare your own uh, set of notes and revise them. And I am going to tell you exactly how to prepare your own notes. So we are going to start with the chapter of body fluids and circulation. This is, uh, I am taking this as an example because this is also your basis for your upcoming MBBS. I want you to prepare these notes and save these notes for your MBBS career because you are going to build upon this itself. This is the foundation. So this NCRT textbook is your foundation for your MBBS. So let's start with note making. So for the chapter I've chosen is body fluids and circulation. So if you have watched my videos up till now, you might have seen my uh, way of learning or teaching is very objective. I don't ask you to just read entire text and remember everything. No, that is not possible and that is not required. So again, what we are going to do is look at the pictures and diagrams. First and foremost thing, we are just going to scroll the pages of the textbook. So we are going to scroll the pages and we are going to look at the diagrams. So what I've done for you is I've made a, a copy of notes for this chapter and I'll show you process by process how, how to start, how to write, what to write and how to read it. Okay, so come here, I'll show you. So I've opened this chapter of body fluids and circulation. So first, as we have seen the diagrams, now we'll read the headings. What headings they have and uh, how do we approach it? First, there is blood, then we have plasma, then we have formed elements, 
we have blood groups then we have coagulation of blood lymph uh, tissue fluid circulatory pathways human circulatory system cardiac cycle electrocardiograph double circulation regulation of cardiac activity and disorders of circulatory system so by this we get an idea that what we are going to talk about is mostly blood and its circulation okay so what is blood we have all seen we have got cuts so we know the color of blood is red and uh, it contains hemoglobin so basic idea we have right and now we are going to study how the heart pumps blood where the blood goes from where and what is the path it follows so this is the basic idea we'll build upon it now so first is uh, it is uh, given that there are two types of body fluids in blood uh, in our body that is blood and lymph okay this is the first important line from your introduction part then i have written it here body fluid blood and lymph then there are elements in blood so there are three types of element that is given in the textbook that is fluid matrix plasma and formed elements so plasma is about 55% formed elements is about 45% and everything consisting of it is fluid matrix okay then elements of blood are also divided into rbcs these are called as erythrocytes so now you have certain points that you need to remember about erythrocytes because this will be asked in mcq everything is uh, true about erythrocyte except so you must know exactly what the points are so uh, erythrocyte it is called as erythrocytes then it is 5 to 5.5 million per cubic centimeter uh, cubic mm they have no nucleus they have biconcave shape uh, they have uh, they contain hemoglobin therefore they are red colored hemoglobin normal uh, normally should be 12 to 16 gram per 100 ml of blood life span of rbc is 120 days and the uh, rbc destruction is done in the spleen and therefore it is called as graveyard the rbc so these are eight nine points these are very simple to remember if you put it point wise if you go on reading it from the textbook every time you're going to forget one or two points but if you jot down one by one you will be like yes one two three four this 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 and i'm done with rbc so one part is done then we come to platelets now what about platelets two three important points that it is called as thrombocytes it is produced from megakaryocytes it helps in clotting and uh, coagulation the normal count is 1.5 to 3 lakh per mm that's it you're done with rbcs you're done with platelets now we come to another important element which is uh, another important element is wbc right what is wbc wbc is white blood cells so in white blood cells we have different different categories so we have two categories one is granulocyte other is a granulocyte in granulocyte again we have three different categories neutrophils eosinophils and basophils and in our granulocytes we have lymphocytes and monocytes that's it you just have to make this table it is given in the form of text and therefore the length of the text is entire page but that entire page can be summarized into a small table which you can just understand and remember by looking at it and uh then again with that you can just write neutrophils are the uh, highest they are 60 to 65% of granulocytes eosinophils resist infection and they have a uh, role in allergies then basophils uh, they secrete histamine serotonin and heparin which causes inflammation in the body that's it you're done with granulocytes then in lymphocytes you have t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes those cause immune response whenever there is foreign body in our uh, system then t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes do their work so that's it the entire 1 2 3 pages have been just completed in this single sheet of paper and i think if you just write it properly and you don't need to open even the textbook on the final day of your revision you can just go through these notes okay so now i'm going to tell you this is very subjective and very a uh, specific point wise things that we have covered now in general how do we approach the systems okay so now if i want to study cardiovascular system so it is given into how many 5 6 7 pages here okay so now if i want to consolidate it and understand the crux what i will do i will do uh, what i will do is i will read it i will understand it and i will make a diagram of my own so i have made it here just for you to understand so we will first understand the composition or the anatomy of heart so heart has four chambers we all know it is given in the textbook also but the textbook diagram that they have given is very complex okay so you have to go on the net and search for easier diagrams or you can make it yourself 
so i have a diagram that i've made myself after reading the text to so as to make it very easy so there is a uh, right atrium atrium is above ventricle is below right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle okay so just remember atrium and ventricle are just two compartments so the right side is having deoxygenated blood the left side is having oxygenated blood so the right atrium receives blood from the heart is here right so from the superior part of the body superior vena cava brings the blood from inferior part of the body inferior vena cava brings the blood and it goes into right right atrium from right atrium the blood goes into right ventricle from right ventricle the deoxygenated blood goes into the lungs what will the lungs do the lungs will purify it it will give oxygen so the deoxygenated blood will be converted into oxygenated blood and that will be supplied to the left atrium and from the left atrium it will go to the left ventricle and from the left ventricle it will be distributed to the entire body that's it simple 2 minute concept of the circulatory system how the blood flows very easy if you understand this you are going to understand this chapter very very nicely and you will be able to answer all the questions so therefore these diagrams are important now you have to know the names of the vessels in entire body all the arteries carry oxygenated blood arteries means oxygenated blood okay only there is one exception that is pulmonary artery why because it carries deoxygenated blood from right ventricle to the lungs from right ventricle to the lungs the deoxygenated blood is carried by pulmonary artery and from the lungs to left atrium it is carried by pulmonary vein so this is the only exception this is only your mcq so you have to understand what questions they can ask you also have the set of pyqs previous year questions so you can just go through it and you will understand what points they are trying to ask and just remember those concepts that's it you don't have to mug up the entire chapter so here as i've seen see i've done the diagram for you very easily all the blue is marked for the deoxygenated blood the red is marked for the oxygenated blood right again from the lungs it comes to the heart from heart the aorta takes the blood to the entire body and then arteries um then turn into the capillaries from capillaries there is desiccation of the blood it is supplied to the tissues again the veins carry the blood to the heart and then heart uh, sends blood to the lungs this is the double circulation double circulation is understood circulation in the heart is understood that's it then when you go into the detail you will go into the cardiac cycle so already the length of video has exceeded most of the time so i won't go into each and every detail because that that's not possible to cover the entire syllabus but i am here to give you an idea of how to actually approach the subject and how to build your concept so that it is not just restricted to this one mcq exam of neat ug which is very very important and this will help you in that as well but also carry these notes and your concepts forward so that you will ace in your mbbs and this is how i have also personally topped in all the profs of mbbs and i have also topped in my md so the foundation has to be strong for the building to become a skyscraper if you want to be, uh, if you want to build only one story building then the foundation might be weak but if you want to build a skyscraper the foundation has to be strong and this is your foundation this is the year that you build your future upon so i think i have uh, tried my best to make you understand how to easily approach a subject how to make notes and how to just revise this and go for your mcqs and i think not just studying but solving mcqs is also very important so once you're done with the chapter once you have made your notes you have studied go to the text uh, go to the text where you have mcqs your pyqs and solve the mcqs from this particular chapter so that when it is fresh it will again get recollected in your mind and with the repetition it will become a long term memory the short term memory is converted to a long term memory only with repetition and good rest make sure you get 6 to 7 hours of sleep because without that your short term memory will not get converted to long term memory and whatever you have studied you will forget it the next day so give your brain that space to uh, to actually convert this and make it into a long term memory so that at the day of the exam you will not be confused and you will get just the right answer when you see the question okay so i hope this helps if there is anything that you need to know 
please mention it in the comments below we love to have have your feedback and thank you for showing such a good response on our videos i i hope this has been helpful and if you want uh, that we should make some more such content give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and write down the comments below whatever you want us to make okay so all the very best we are going to put some uh, more videos about how to approach the neat uz emotionally and uh, psychologically also so stay tuned for that as well all the very best